Hi there. Now in this video I'm going to be running through part C here to calculate the variance of x from this probability density function. The parts A and B have been done in previous videos and I've given you the answer to part B just in case you need it for part C. So if you like to pause the video, if you haven't looked at this question before, just give you a moment to do that. When you come back I'll take you slowly through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, in order to do the variance of x, what we've got to be familiar with is this idea that the variance of a random variable x is always equal to e of x squared, the expected value of x squared, minus e of x all squared. That's the mean all squared there. So in order to do this, we've already got e of x from part b. It was 2. So that term there is taken care of. What we need to evaluate is e of x squared. So how do we work that out? Well, again, you should be familiar with this idea. If not, you can always check back on my video tutorials on this. e of x squared is equal to the integral of x squared times the probability density function f of x and that's integrated with respect to x between your lower and upper limits and for this distribution it's between naught and k and in part a we found out that k was 4 so it's the integral of this from naught to 4. So if that's the case then all we need to do is just substitute our values in. 3 over 32 is a constant in this one term, so I'm going to pull that out the front of the integral. Don't have to do that, as I've said many times before, but it does make this a lot easier to work with. And we've got x squared times f of x. Well, x squared times that x there is going to be x cubed, and then it's just going to be multiplied with the bracket there, k minus x. But k is 4, so I'll just put that in as 4 minus x, and we're integrating that with respect to x. So if I just border this off, then we've got, therefore, e of x squared. Just put that back in again. It's equal to 3 over 32 multiplied by the integral from 0 to 4. And what I need to do now is just expand the bracket. So you're going to get 4x cubed and then minus x to the power 4. Put that in brackets because we've got more than one term and we integrate that with respect to x. So now if we integrate the terms we've got the integral of 4x cubed well that's in the usual way just adding 1 to the power that's x to the power 4 divide by 4 and you've got x 4x to the power 4 over 4. The 4's will cancel and you're just left with x to the power 4. And for this term here, add 1 to the power, x to the power 5, divide by the new power, 5. OK? And that's going between the limits 0 to 4. In the usual way, just substitute 4 in first of all, and then we subtract what we get when we substitute 0 in. So when you substitute 4 in, you're going to get 4 to the power 4 minus 4 to the power 5 over 5. And then from this, we'd subtract what we get when we put 0 through, but that's just going to be 0, so that's all we're left with. And if you work this out on your calculator, you'll find you get 24 over 5, 24 fifths then. So we can now feed this back into our equation here for the variance of x. So therefore, the variance of the random variable x is going to be equal to e of x squared, which we now seen is 24 fifths. And then it's minus e of x all squared. Well, e of x was 2, so you got minus 2 squared. And work this one out, and you end up with 4 fifths. Variance then, 4 fifths.